just remember, the stuff presented by this creepy bear is from the Evolution 101 website, written by the Understanding Evolution Team. Commentary by Rentafriend2000. That's me! The central ideas of evolution are that life has a history, it has changed over time, and the different species share common ancestors. Actually, this is true, and creationists do not disagree with this at all. Hmm, I guess that makes creationists evolutionists. Or maybe they're still failing to define things in a usable way. But I'm no PhD. It's true that different species do have common ancestors. Living things have changed over time. But that isn't evolution in the Darwinian sense. This central idea merely refers to things like the diversity of chickens today coming from fewer species of chickens in the past. We observe chickens, over time, becoming different chickens. That, my friends, is the biblical story. That is creation. Darwinian evolution requires the blind faith leap of believing all living things have a common ancestor. From the chickens of today, back to the first chicken, back to the first bird, back to the first lizard, back to the first fish, back to the first worm, until all the way back at the head of the family is Grandma Rock. I smell a serious bait and switch here. We observe lots of different dogs descending from some ancestral wolf kind over a few thousand years, and we observe certain vegetables descending from a common cabbage ancestor over a few thousand years. But to then try and argue that, therefore, wolves and cabbages descended from a common ancestor billions of years ago is, I will argue, stretching the evidence a tad thin. To restate the fact that they are glossing over, evolution needs to demonstrate how bacteria could gain the genetic information to add to their physical complexity until they become everything from wolves to cabbage. To give you a metaphor, imagine you have eight popsicle sticks and a bottle of glue. You have the instructions for making a picture frame. What I want you to build is the Starship Enterprise, not a model of it, the real thing. What kind of information would you need to add to your instructions in order to fly me someplace no man has gone before? Quite a bit, wouldn't you say? You might need mom to drive you to Home Depot more than once before you get that accomplished. Also, each step along the way has to be functional or the entire process stops. As a similar metaphor, imagine trying to turn a single prop engine plane into a Boeing 747 while it's in flight with small successive modifications. Keep in mind that it needs to keep flying or you all die. Oh, and you're blindfolded and you don't know that you're trying to make a 747. Are you starting to see what creationists mean when we say that all life is too complex to evolve by chance? Because if not, I can keep cranking out metaphors. The evolutionary story from start to finish is like turning a popsicle stick picture frame into the Enterprise. Only the tools and materials and the increase in information are made by a blind accidental process with no mind, purpose, or goals, and the end product is far more complex than a simple starship. Keep all that in mind, because they're about to teach us how it's done. <laughs> Here, you can explore how evolutionary change and evolutionary relationships are represented in family trees, how these trees are constructed, and how this knowledge affects biological classification. You will also find a timeline of evolutionary history and information on some specific events in the history of life, human evolution and the origin of life. It's rare to find, but occasionally a book will have the courage to label the spaces on a chart like this to designate the difference between the animal we know to exist or have existed and the ones we have to assume for the sake of the chart. In short, when you take away all of the imaginary friends, all of those horizontal lines magically go away. Uh, for those of you who are slow on the uptake, that means all of those T-intersections and the transitional ancestor they represent don't exist either. Which should lead you to ask, what's the point of this chart then? Which is my point exactly. And we'll see you next time for part three. <laughs>